The Airbus A350 has been unveiled as Airbus's trump card in the ongoing battle for supremacy in the aviation industry. Initially, Airbus did not want to build this aircraft as a completely new design because their original plan was to develop it as an upgrade of the existing A330. In fact, it was Boeing who made Airbus decide to turn the A350 into reality. So how come this unexpected aircraft not only challenges, but also threatens to end Boeing's long-standing dominance? We'll find out in this video. The development of the Airbus A350 can be seen as a direct consequence of Boeing's pioneering work with the 787 Dreamliner, which was the first commercial aircraft to extensively use carbon composite materials for its construction. In the early 2000s, Airbus was initially resistant to adopting a composite fuselage for their new aircraft, and one of the main reasons was the company's extensive experience and success with metallic airframes. Composites, while offering advantages such as weight reduction and increased fuel efficiency, also presented challenges in terms of production, maintenance, and certification. Airbus had to ensure that the new materials could meet the rigorous safety and durability standards required for commercial aviation. The company needed to develop new manufacturing processes, testing procedures, and maintenance practices for composite structures, which required substantial investment in research and development. Additionally, Airbus had to consider the regulatory environment and the need for certification rules to be updated to accommodate composite airframe structures. This meant that Airbus had to work closely with regulatory agencies to establish new baselines and reevaluate criteria for things like tail strikes, emergency situation needs, and crashworthiness. The shift to composites also involved a rethinking of design philosophy. Airbus had to assess its root of the art with composite technologies and ensure that the design robustness was equivalent to or better than their existing models. The company aimed to reduce maintenance costs and achieve a fatigue and corrosion-free design, which required a thorough understanding of the behavior of composite materials over the aircraft's life cycle. As a result, their plan was to update the existing A330 with new wings and engines, but maintain the aluminum fuselage in an effort to compete with Boeing 787-9 and 777-200ER. However, the aviation industry, including some of Airbus's biggest customers, criticized this initial design. They urged Airbus to adopt a more innovative approach, similar to Boeing's use of composites in the 787 Dreamliner. Boeing, in fact, had taken a significant risk by choosing to build the airplane with carbon composites, a decision that was initially met with skepticism due to concerns about the unknowns, particularly regarding fire safety. However, despite these concerns and some initial setbacks, the 787 could eventually prove to be a safe and efficient aircraft which validated Boeing's choice of materials and design approach. This success of Boeing in utilizing composite materials, combined with the criticism majorly from leasing companies and influential figures in the industry, really made Airbus rethink their strategy. Faced with the risk of losing market share and the push from industry leaders for a more revolutionary design, Airbus's CEO at the time, Gustav Humbert, decided to pivot. Airbus then announced a brand new aircraft featuring a composite fuselage the A350XWB with XWB standing for extra wide body, during the Farnborough International Air Show in 2006, following Boeing's lead. This strategic shift not only allowed Airbus to remain competitive, but also led to improvements over Boeing's initial design. The decision to follow Boeing's example ultimately proved beneficial for Airbus, leading to a modern 21-century aircraft that has been well-received in the market. Now that leads us to the question, how did this airplane draw so much interest and even become a threat to its main competitor, Boeing? Of course, everything doesn't end at just composite materials. The aviation industry's priorities have evolved beyond the traditional metrics of fuel efficiency. Today, airlines are increasingly concerned with overall mileage and safety, areas where Boeing has recently encountered difficulties. Airbus has capitalized on this shift by demonstrating a strong commitment to leading the wide-body market. This commitment is evident in its aggressive strategy, which includes launching new models like the Airbus A380 and significantly upgrading existing ones like the A350. Following the recovery of the aviation industry, there has been a surge in demand for long-haul travel. Airlines are seeking larger planes capable of carrying more passengers to remain competitive. This demand has led to a spike in the need for wide-body aircraft. 
However, while demand has increased, the supply of aircraft has not kept pace, leaving manufacturers like Airbus and Boeing in a race against time to fulfill nearly a thousand orders for wide-body aircraft. In response to this demand, Airbus has set ambitious production goals. Out of the 700 wide-body aircraft planned for production this year, only 42 are of the A350 class. These orders, placed in 2021, have put Airbus under pressure to meet existing quotas before they can address the influx of new orders for additional A350s. The company's dedication to meeting these demands underscores its commitment to maintaining a leading position in the market. Adding to the A350's allure is the government of Saudi Arabia's bid to acquire its fleet of A350 aircraft. This move is significant as it aligns Saudi Arabia with other Middle Eastern airlines, such as Qatar Airways and Dubai's Emirates, which have also placed bulk orders for Airbus aircraft. Saudi Arabia's aim to procure between 40 to 80 jets is part of a broader ambition to establish a global airline that will challenge the dominant players in the Middle East's aviation sector. Boeing, on the other hand, has encountered a series of hurdles that have impacted its competitive edge. Supply chain disruptions have been a significant obstacle, with the company's CEO acknowledging that these issues could persist for the next 18 months. These production challenges have led to delays and inconsistencies in delivering new aircraft, which in turn affects airlines' operations and expansion plans. Moreover, geopolitical factors have also played a role in Boeing's recent struggles. Political tensions between the United States and Saudi Arabia have introduced complexities into the business dealings of American companies, including Boeing. While the specifics of these tensions are multifaceted, they stem from a range of issues, including diplomatic relations, security concerns, and economic policies. Such tensions can influence major purchasing decisions, as seen with Saudi Arabia's recent moves in the aviation sector. Although Saudi Arabia currently operates a fleet of approximately 75 Boeing 787, the superior offerings of the Airbus A350 could potentially disrupt any long-standing relationships. Boeing's struggles have also been exacerbated by increased scrutiny from the Federal Aviation Agency, prioritizing passenger safety over rapid production. The delay in deliveries of 777 or 787 models until 2025 has provided Airbus with an opportunity to secure a larger share of the market. Airlines like United, which have traditionally operated all Boeing fleets, are now considering modern alternatives like the A350 due to Boeing supply issues. While the Dreamliner has a maximum capacity of 330 passengers, Airbus aircraft is being refitted to accommodate more than 410 passengers. This expansion of capacity makes the A350 a more attractive option for airlines like Saudi Arabia, which are looking to expand their long-haul capabilities. Moreover, Airbus continues to innovate, equipping the A350 with the latest technology to enhance the passenger experience. One such innovation is the introduction of dimmable windows, which allow passengers to adjust the level of light to their preference. Additionally, Airbus has integrated projectors into the cabin, enabling the display of flight information on the sidewalls and overhead bins. The Internet of Things, IAT, plays a central role in the technological advancements of the A350. With IAT sensors embedded throughout the aircraft, passengers can enjoy a highly personalized experience. They can adjust their seat settings, ambient temperature, and lighting directly from their smartphones, tailoring their environment to their preferences. The sensors also enable a range of operational efficiencies, such as predictive maintenance, which anticipates the need for repairs, thereby minimizing downtime and ensuring consistent safety. Additionally, the pre-ordering system for meals not only enhances passenger convenience, but also significantly reduces food wastage, contributing to more sustainable flight operations. Beyond comfort and efficiency, IAT plays a crucial role in safety and security, providing vital data during emergencies and monitoring for unauthorized access, thus bolstering the overall integrity of flight operations. The integration of IAT into the A350 represents Airbus's commitment to innovation, enhancing every aspect of the flying experience while promoting environmental responsibility and operational excellence. In conclusion, the Airbus A350 represents a significant threat to Boeing's market position. With its technological advancements, production capacity, and strategic alliances, 
Airbus is poised to usurp Boeing's role as the leader in wide-body aircraft. The A350 success is a testament to Airbus's foresight and innovation, signaling a potential shift in the aviation industry's power dynamics. As Boeing grapples with its own challenges, the A350 stands ready to redefine what airlines and passengers can expect from a modern, wide-body aircraft. Boeing must now navigate this new landscape, where the Airbus A350 looms large as both a rival and a harbinger of change.